Okay, so that's um, a bit about conversion from AC to DC. Now we've kind of seen some circuits and um, we've seen some of the components in there and I want to give a, I suppose, a quick overview of some of the um, items in those circuits and then what do they mean. So we're going to look um, mainly at voltage and current um, today. So we've been talking a bit about AC and DC and um, you're probably aware that um, voltages can be of the AC form which is basically um, similar to what you might have in your um, in your main supply in your in your house and then a DC um, type which would be more like um, from a DC power supply or from a battery and so on. And the main difference as we've um, alluded to already is basically the alternating current changes its direction of flow um, usually in some uh, periodic or repeating manner whereas direct current will always flow in the same direction so it, it will give you a fixed um, fixed value. So as I mentioned you know we have um, I suppose a preconception of, of the different types of these as I said AC traditionally associated with um, main supply and we we saw Nikola Tesla um, earlier on in this course as being one of the people who was instrumental in making um, AC transmission systems a reality and also involved in the development of an AC induction motor which became commercially used and on the other side we see then is basically um, DC sources so as I say a lot of our modern electronic equipment requires DC voltage to operate that may come from uh, batteries or it may come from a charger or um, a constant DC power supply as shown on the top um, right here. So why AC or why DC? Well for AC the reason we um, use that instead of transmitting uh, voltages from one place to another in, in a DC form which if that's what's used by a lot of electronic equipment um, it would seem to make sense but the problem is that um, you can't easily trans, uh, transform or sorry transmit um, DC voltage from one place to another. AC voltage due to its alternating nature lends itself better to um, uh, electricity transmission and it will um, allow us to transmit uh, high voltages with um, least amount of energy lost compared to if we try to um, do something similar using a, using a DC voltage. There are of course um, some issues not all of our equipment in our homes works with AC voltages some does but a lot of the more sensitive um, electronic equipment requires um, DC voltages to operate on so one issue is that the AC which at high voltages it's it's more efficient to transmit it and indeed the AC voltage that's in our power lines and in our substations and so on is even at a much higher voltage than what we, what we use in our homes which involves some transformer sitting between the uh, power stations and the um, power lines and our homes but even at the level where it comes into our homes it's still dangerous for, for um, use um, and we basically try and reduce the voltage level and also um, try and often try and, and rectify it and convert it to DC for our various electronic um, items to use. So we've been using the terms um, voltage and current but we're going to look now a little bit at what's the difference between them. Um, we know that um, electric circuits require current to operate okay so you have a torch um, if there's no battery there it's not going to light up by itself so you have to apply the battery through some kind of switch through your bulb and the current basically that flows through that closed circuit um, causes the bulb to light up. And current, if you um, think of what's actually happening in there, it's basically a flow of electrons around the closed electric circuit. In fact, a lot of electrons. So when we talk about um, milliamps and um, point something of an amp, it's actually quite a lot of electrons as we see in a few minutes. But to um, basically um, think of how current works in a circuit, and we've um, I suppose we alluded to this before. Imagine that we have um, some kind of uh, circuit with a battery in it. So we have a, the the long line is the positive side of the battery, and the short line is the is the negative. And let's draw basically a very simple circuit, which um, we'll put our light bulb in just for to keep on the same example. So I'll draw. Something here that looks vaguely like a light bulb. Now what happens is we draw current in our circuit basically is drawn in this direction. It's drawn flowing out from the positive side of the uh, battery 
and it's flowing back into the negative side of the battery. And this kind of holds with the, um, the idea that current, electrical current is like something like a uh, flow of water. It goes from the place of, of the, the highest um, uh, volume, which is the positive side of the battery, um, to the place with the, um, the, the lower um, pressure. If you think of two tanks of water, this is why I talked about volumes of water and pressure and so on. And imagine one of these tanks was fuller or more full than the other one. And there was some pipe connected in between them that allowed water to flow from one to the other. So you would think of this as being sort of a, a place with a, a higher volume or a higher pressure of water. And the water basically in here should push through this pipe and flow into the place with the lower volume of water. And this is kind of similar to how um, electricity, electricity was viewed. And scientists knew that there was a, a sort of a positive um, side to a, a battery and a negative side to the battery. And then they imagined, well, the current of electricity must flow from the positive to the, the negative side of, of the battery. This is the, the negative here. In reality, what's actually happening is, in here, the electrons are flowing in the opposite direction. The electrons are flowing out from the negative side of the battery, and they're flowing all the way around the circuit through this bulb, causing the atoms to uh, basically give off excess energy in the form of light as they return to their normal state. And the electrons flow all the way around. So I'll just, um, just imagine they're flowing all the way around here and then back. So this is basically some, some kind of copper wire or something shown on the outside here. And they flow all the way around here, back to the positive. So they're flowing in this direction. So let's draw arrows. The electrons are moving in this direction here from the negative side of the battery around the loop and back here, attracted around to the positive side. Um, but we draw the current flowing in the opposite direction. This is what's called conventional current flow. Um, so I'll just write here conv current for short. But the conventional current flow basically is the historical interpretation of how current flows around a circuit. And indeed, as we've shown here, flowing from a positive rounds the loop to the negative. In reality, the flow of electrons is in the opposite direction um, from the negative around to the positive. So I said a lot, I said a lot of electrons. How many is a lot? Well, one ampere of current, and this is in the footnote here at the bottom, is 6.24 by 10 to the power of 18 electrons. Um, passing a point in a second. So if we had 6.24 by 10 to the power of 18 electrons passing a point in a circuit in a second, that corresponds to one amp of current. You might remember earlier on we showed the um, picture of the mobile phone charger in our last um, class. And um, it said that the, um, the, the charger had a rated current of 0.17 amps. So 0.17 amps is basically 0.17 times 6.24 by 10 to the power of 18 electrons. And that's roughly, um, you can see there, uh, 1 by 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So you know, that's in, in scientific terms, that's called exa is 10 to the power of 18. So it's 1 exa electrons flowing through some cross-sectional area per second. So a small amount of current, I suppose, um, corresponds to a lot of electrons. Um, just a point here, that's the current is measured in amps. And um, the symbol, or the quantity symbol for current is I, which is from the French, from the French intensity. And the unit symbol is A for amperes. So how's current different from voltage? So if we go back to the water analogy and we think of, um, imagine there was, um, again, some kind of uh, area where there was water and you wanted to get it to another place. If you didn't have the gravity or pressure as we had in the previous example, how would you do it? You would use some force. So you'd use some, you would use some force to pump that water from one place to another. And that would cause basically a, a flow of, of, of water current from, from point A to point B. Um, in the electrical analogy, we can think of voltage being the force that pumps electrons around a, a circuit, a circuit being a closed loop. So voltage is basically um, our 
uh, you can think of it as, a, as an electronic or electrical force, uh, sometimes referred to as EMF or electromotive force. Historically, um, EMF would have been one of the terms used for voltage. And again, I suppose you, you think of um, basically it being the force that moves electrons as the electromotive force around a particular loop. Um, as we've seen uh, in terms of the symbols for current and um, the quantity symbol and the unit symbol, voltage has a quantity symbol of V and it's also measured in uh, volts, which is a unit symbol of V. So the same symbol for both in this case. We've also found that a battery has two charged materials. If a connection is made between them, electrons will leave the negative charge and travel to the positive charge. Well, let me make such a connection. And you see the results. Though the pressure is small, it caused enough electrons to flow to burn the wire up. Now, this force is called an electromotive force, or an EMF. It's electromotive because it motivates electrons to move. Now, other terms used to identify the force is electrical pressure difference of potential, but you'll probably see this one used most often, voltage. Now regardless of the term used to identify the force, the unit of measure is identified as volt. Now, I'm sure you've heard the expression, a 6 volt battery or 110 volt out. So here's some common um, symbols for voltage sources when shown in a circuit. We've seen some of these already, so this one here on the top right is a DC voltage source. There's a minus and a uh, a plus side. This is actually showing multiple cells, for example, of a battery um, in series. So this part here, for example, you could imagine it might be, for example, um, 1.5 volts. And this might be another 1.5 volts, so kind of a multi-cell battery um, all connected in series. So the plus, as I said, is the longer side and the minus is on the shorter side. So that's the positive and the negative side uh, of the battery, respectively. Um, a ground symbol, which is the, um, the, the common or the, the point of lowest voltage in the circuit, is shown using this um, successive series of lines. And then an AC voltage source is basically shown by a circle with a kind of a sinusoidal um, picture in the middle. Some other typical um, components you may see in a circuit. Um, the one that we will look at later on is capacitor, which is basically a device for storing um, energy in an electric field. It's shown by these two um, vertical parallel lines. A resistor is shown here as this um, zigzag um, picture, but we could also represent a resistor using a rectangle. This, uh, the wires just showing, the lines are showing the wires on either side of the resistor. These are used interchangeably and um, might be used, uh, you might use the zigzag or you might use the, the rectangle form. The diode shown here by the triangle with the line on one side um, we've seen that already in the in the rectifier examples, and then this one down here at the bottom, which is the transformer, and uh, shows basically a, a coil at an input and a coil at an output, and they're usually wrapped around uh, the same transformer core, which transforms uh, one voltage level to another voltage level. So it's a very simple circuit. Um, this is using some of the elements we saw earlier on, plus an extra one or two. And um, we have a battery shown here on the left hand side. And we've got a resistor shown here on the, the, um, the right hand side and we might explain what the purpose of that particular resistor is later on. But we have basically a switch and we have an LED and this is similar to a, a torch. You can imagine basically that um, the switch is closed and the LED is on and the switch is open and the LED is off. The reason for the resistor is basically that this LED has a certain current that it needs to operate or rather it has a rate of current in which it's desirable to operate the LED and if you uh, too much or too little it either would blow or not work. And the purpose of the resistor here is basically to um, limit the amount of current flowing through this, through this um, LED. So LED stands for light emitting diode. We're familiar with LEDs from various electronic devices we have and um, basically the current uh, flowing through it which is provided by this um, battery causes the LED to turn on. We've already seen that when a bulb is connected to a battery, electrons will flow from the battery through the wire, the bulb, and back to the other side of the battery. 
In this case, I'm using copper wire. And remember, copper allows electrons to flow because it has a large number of free electrons. Now, if I put an insulator in the circuit, the bulb doesn't blow. Here's the insulator, the air between here and the battery. Remember, an insulator contains few, if any, free electrons. It prevents current flow, except when there's a tremendous amount of voltage. So another requirement for current is a complete path through which the electrons can flow. And keep in mind that if we generate a high enough voltage, current will flow through anything. But to keep the voltages in a practical range, we'll usually use conductors. Now, there are a few more facts about current that we should know. For example, what is the direction of current with respect to the voltage source? Well, we said that electrons move from negative to positive. But how do we know that this is true? Besides, what difference does it make? Let me show you the importance of knowing how current flows. Some devices will operate only when current is flowing in the proper direction. This semiconductor diode is such a device. Now, I'll make a connection here. Move the bulb in so we can see the, all of the action. Now, if I apply current to the device in the proper direction, like this, the bulb lights. If I turn the diode around and try to make current flow in the wrong direction, nothing happens. So to make this diode work, we would have to know the direction of current flow. 